Hi everyone, uh, this is the Rough Bajaj Show. Uh, today's guest is Anish, uh, the recording artist and producer. Uh, Anish, uh, h- how's your how's your day been? It's been good, man. Appreciate you having me. I'm excited to uh, excited to chop it up with you. Um, it's been a good day, man. It's Monday, you know, Motivation Monday. We grind, we hustle. Um, shout out to the time to grind. No, I'm kidding. But um, <laughs> happy to be here, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, you're most welcome. Yeah, thank, thanks so much for uh, uh, coming on my show. And um, yeah, it was a pleasure meeting you uh, about uh, a weekend, uh, about last weekend uh, here in Arlington. So it was, it was great to uh, meet you in person. And I'm glad to have you on my show today. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, crazy. Yeah, that was that was awesome. Um, yeah, third city of, of our tour. Um, bumped into you in the crowd. Um, never know who you meet and you never know what kind of conversations you have. So Again, yeah, appreciate appreciate you having me on, man. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, anytime. And uh, yeah, to uh, for the listeners, I just wanted to start out by playing uh, one of your songs uh, called Baga. So I'll uh, play that for them for a little bit, and then we can go into the Q and A. Sounds good. with the real leaf. My mama be reminding me I need to eat. Playing ball outside by the M3. Subs of y'all night with the chat and the telegate. Make them dance, make them dance. My brother, I need a switch with the friendly bands. No cover, Indians. Yo, we Indians called Kata. Feeling there, yo, we feeling there called Gappa. My mama tie Creole when she code switch. The mother tongue moving like a poet. Tiger show flying on the flat screen. Flat screen. Yeah, so I'll play about a minute of that. So it was a uh, yeah, really cool song. It was a um, little, little, little fun tidbit, I guess, about that song. We um, we filmed a music video for it uh, a little while ago. It's on YouTube. It's uh, if you search Baga B A G H A and my name A apostrophe N I C H E, you'll find it. But that's probably like the most fun I've ever had filming a music video. We um yeah you you you'll see why when you watch the video i'm not gonna spoil it <laughs> right yeah most definitely yeah, I'll, I'll definitely uh, check it out and uh all the listeners should definitely check out your video and um your music on apple music uh, especially the the baga song so yeah that's really cool and i, I really love the 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 picture on on the song uh the tiger so that's, that, that's oh really yeah cool. oh yeah 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 there's definitely there's a lot of meaning behind the behind the music and the song so yeah for sure Right. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, yeah. So with um, the first question to start with, I'd uh, love to have you tell the listeners a little bit about yourself. Yeah, for sure. Um, so my name is Anish. I'm a uh, hip hop artist, recording artist and producer I'm from Denver, Colorado. Um, I live in San Francisco. I've, I've been out here five going on six years. Um, I had a pretty non-traditional path into the music industry. Um, kind of a high level of it was, you know, I grew up thinking I was going to be a doctor and I was going to follow my sister's footsteps. I went to school at MIT and did engineering and finance. And I had all these technical majors and, you know, I thought I was going to do that. And I, I met my best friend in college, Yusuf, um, you know, and we, we hit it off. We started doing music together. It became more than a hobby. And, um, I got to open for, for Jeremiah, um, the r and artist. Um, at my my school spring fest show my senior year um, graduated gave a, a gave the commencement speech as class president um, I got to rap for Matt Damon um, the speech is actually online so I did a little rap at the end um, fun little thing and then I think all of these events kind of together led me when I came to San Francisco for a, a fintech job and in the back of my head I was like can I do music you know is that something that's a possibility I reconnected with a childhood friend of mine. His name's Varun. We grew up in Denver together. We used to play basketball at the rec center, uh, that sort of stuff. Found out he was doing music, found out he was recording, he was producing. He took me to the, to the studio for the first time. So I finally got the like experience of studio quality music. That's where I really leveled up as an artist. I really got to go to a legitimate studio, 
learn how to record, learn how to, you know, write in front of professional engineers, um, have my music really sonically uh, superior to what I had done before with my, my laptop and my AirPods and my, my headphones and trying to do all that on a computer myself. Um, fast forward, I've kind of been at it since 2017. Uh, I've been working at a, a studio called Different First Studios in San Francisco with a slew of awesome engineers. Um, Leanne Doe and, and Jorge uh, Hernandez are, are were my two main engineers. And, I, and you know, they've worked with the likes of G-Eazy and, um, and, you know, some of those great artists that you're, you, you, you've heard and love, um, at, at least right now for me. Um, I'm in the middle of a tour. Uh, San Francisco, Los Angeles, uh, Washington, D.C., New York City next, April 30th, Denver, May 8th. Um, I put an EP out. I put a bunch of singles out. Just threw, just got a new music video out on my YouTube. Um, doing some more music soon. Going to drop some more stuff. Hopefully my sophomore EP. Uh, so very busy, excited to, you know, travel, do more shows, build some new bands, meet some new people. And again, I hope my music is, uh, is something that, you know, listeners can learn from, can, can grow with, um, and, you know, they find something valuable. Um, that's kind of my brand is a niche, like essentially my name is a niche, but like, it's a play on my name with kind of my, the topics that I, I, I dive into vary, um, anything from, you know, a song like Girls vs. Goals, where I talk about relationships and ambition, uh, a song like Baga, where I dissect my culture, a song like Sea of Belief, which is about, you know, like a love song, um, Expectations, which is like the pressure just of trying to go into a certain career path, and now I'm in music, and it has a lot of layers. So really, the niche of my music is an amalgamation of all the variety of experiences that I've had in my life that I try to talk about, and I've even put a quadratic formula in one of my one of my verses. So, um, you know, definitely, definitely like to talk about my life. Definitely like I'm not afraid of just being very technical and enjoying math and all that and also talking about real stuff as well. So I'm um, glad to be here. You know, I, I, I I'm glad to share my music with the world. And, you know, I hope I hope you guys do resonate with with at least one of my songs um, and excited for more. So, yeah, that's kind of me in a nutshell. I know that was like 45 minutes, but I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, no, good. No, I really, I really love the story. And uh, yeah, it's it really cool how you've been able to uh, do so many things like of your career, like, for example, like rapping for Matt Damon. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it uh, takes, uh, you know, time to uh, do, do, do all that. And I think with your experience, you've been able to do that like within a short amount of time. So uh, that's really cool. Yeah. So, yeah, I appreciate you sharing that. Yeah. And, no, I appreciate it. Yeah, definitely. Um, and my next question will be, uh, what inspired you to get into uh, the business, entertainment, and, and technology space? Um. Yeah, I mean, I think the so I was actually thinking about this the other day. So um, it's really funny how the stars align. So for me, um, yeah, I, I was class president for like nine years, uh, high school, college, middle school. And there were kind of three things that I learned kind of in, at a young age. My dad always instilled this. He said, shake, shake hands and make friends. And couple of things he always used to tell me was, was, you know, always just be friendly with people, get to know them. Uh, and I think three skills that I learned was just like public speaking, you know, being in front of people, being able to read the energy of a room, galvanize a crowd. Two was um, networking, meeting people, really actually understanding people, understanding what makes them tick. And I think third is event planning. You know, I've done a lot of event planning in my life, planning small events, large events, you know, fundraisers, community service, proms, like study breaks, all this stuff. So with the tour, you literally have to plan events, you literally have to network, and you literally have to public speak in front of people and, you know, move a crowd. So I think just in terms of what inspired me to get into it, I think it kind of just happened um, with my passion for music. Um, I took a lot of classes in college that I thought I'd never use, but it's funny that like, I never paid attention into some of them, like, for example, frequencies and new values and engineering for all the electrical engineers out there. And now I engineer my own music, you know, thanks for from, help from my mentor, Jorge, who I mentioned earlier. Like, this is stuff that's kind of come full circle, like stuff that I'm familiar with now, because I remember studying that. 
So like that, and then production as well, just using my ear. I used to do choir when I was little and um, just that, just the whole musicality of stuff and understanding just what sounds good. It's, I guess what I'm saying to you is like all the things that I did, like I studied business as well in college, like how to like finance and numbers. And now I manage my own music business as well. So it's like studying finance, doing like choir, like student government, all these skills that I've learned in these different areas of my life, they've kind of come like full circle. And now I'm applying it to doing the music business. So honestly, just like I focus on the music first. And then I realized because of all the experiences I had in the past with all the skills that I've developed, I could basically just be my own entrepreneur. Like I do have an artist manager. I do have a lawyer. I do have an engineer. I do have people that really help me like my videographer, et cetera. Like a lot of people that have really helped me and have been in my corner since day one. But I would say just being an independent artist, you manage your budget. You know, you have to plan the tour. You have to use your own expenses. You have to schedule the sessions with the engineer to finish the music. You know, you have to literally network with people. You have to build fans. You have to go in front of crowds and perform live. You know, you have to know what sounds good musically and you have to know when you're not right. And you have to kind of, so these are things that I've kind of developed. So what inspired me to get into business and statement and technology Honestly, just following the music and just trusting my my heart and realizing I, I really do love music and not being afraid to say, even though I studied this in college, even though I have this this one path, it's not going to stop me from pursuing what I really love to do. And I, I just want to teach people that like, you don't have to like have society or your parents or people that you, you know, are familiar with tell you who you should be or shouldn't be. You get to define who you are. And you get to wake up every day and choose how you want to live. So if that means quitting your nine to five job and pursuing your passion, if it means having your nine to five job and pursuing your passion, if it means having just a nine to five job and being happy, whatever you want to do, the world is your oyster. Yeah. Well, yeah, I love that. Yeah, I think uh, and I resonate with that because, yeah, I love um, going out to different events and uh, networking. So I, I think it's, uh, it's a great way of like, you know, interacting with people and uh -huh. to, you know, by, by your uh, vision and mission, like, uh, so like, what are you doing with, like you said, your uh, tours, I think that that helps a lot uh, when it comes to like the, that business aspect and technology and entertainment space. So yeah, I really love what you said. Totally, totally. And yeah, like I, as my other, like my nine to five job, uh, you know, I, I, I start out in FinTech too. So just understanding just that whole space as well and kind of how it can pair with music, you know, I think there's a lot of opportunity as well. So, you know, I think I think just the stars, when the stars align, things just start to come together and then you just know, so. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, most definitely. And uh, going to um, the next question is, uh, what is one piece of advice you would give to someone who like to become an uh, upcoming uh, recording artist or producer? Yeah, so I... I a little bit about kind of my journey is, you know, when I started in 2015 in college, um, I had really tough days with music. Like, I feel like either like friends would tell me my music was good. And then like behind my back, they'd be like, this guy is like terrible. Or like they would tell me it was terrible. Either way, it's like, it's not something you want to hear when you're starting. Right. So yeah, I could give you the cliche advice. Like, um don't listen to anybody like be resilient don't quit i mean people know that you can't quit right you have to obviously be resilient you have to be able to like power through things you have to stop caring about people's opinions that's like advice that i'm sure everyone has heard before but i think the one thing i would tell people is be very thoughtful about who you have in your circle pick people who have diversified opinions, not necessarily the same opinions as you, and also people who are on the same mission or have the same vision as you. So I give you an example. For me, I have my family. Obviously, I have my sister. She's musically inclined, but she'll be honest with me. I have my artist manager. He'll also be very honest with me, but he has a different thought process than me sometimes about things. And I appreciate that because that helps me learn and find new ideas and new ways to be better um, new business ventures new just ways to think about things him and I don't necessarily agree on everything but that's exactly why he's because I know he's always going to be honest and then 
my, my, my best friend from college, you know, Yusuf, um, I, I rely on him a lot. And he's also been on the journey with me. Like him and I started doing music at the same time while we were in college. So he's really like, he's seen me grow and he's seen me evolve and vice versa. I've seen the same thing with him. Um, you know, I have my cousins, um, all of my cousins, uh, are very honest with me about what they think of my music and they're always supportive. So I think you gotta, you gotta pick people who are honest with you, who you trust, who are supportive, um, who not, don't necessarily think the same way as you, but who also like have that same hunger and that same vision to help you. And you don't want to pick people who are jealous of you, you know, who are like, I'm not happy for this person's success. Cause I'll tell you this, when I, when I started early, I used to be jealous. I used to be like, why am I not there? Why does this person have this? But you know what? The biggest piece of advice I can give along with the, have a, have a strong circle of, of people you trust, a small circle, is be abundant. Realize there's a lot of opportunities. There's enough for everybody. There's enough for everyone to eat, to, to do well. There's enough opportunity for everyone to thrive. So just because like you do well, doesn't mean that it's at the expense of somebody else, right? So if one of my friends wants an opportunity, I'm happy to give that to them. I always want people to succeed. And I don't feel like if I give something to somebody, it's holding me back. That's not what it is. It's like, we, I have a lot, I have so much to give that I want to help everybody that even if I help everybody, it doesn't mean like, oh, I'm helping them. Therefore I'm not getting what I want. Therefore I'm, I'm like not evolving or progressing as much as they are. So you just got to think abundantly. You got to have the right circle, got to have good energy, good mentality. Um, and just know your vices, know your vices. That's the other thing I would just say, like, know what's, what your like, what your weaknesses are. Like for me, my weakness is sometimes like having fun, going out with friends. So I don't try to do that as much. I go like maybe once every other week, maybe once a month, I cut that back. You know, like I try to make sure like whatever my vice is, if it's going out with friends, if it's drinking, if it's smoking, whatever it is for you, if it's like being on your phone 24 seven, uh, if it's staying up late, if it's eating junk food, if it's watching Netflix, if it's doing things that are holding you back, be aware of those things. Don't, you don't need to cut them out. At least maybe have a cheat day or like cut it back a little bit. Just know what that is. Be aware. So I'd say be self-aware of who you are, know your vices, because the more self-aware you are, the better you'll be as an artist, because the more you'll know about yourself, the more you'll have to talk about and the more you'll realize this is me authentically. I don't need to copy the baby. I don't need to copy Drake. I don't need to copy Cardi B. I don't need to copy Anit Khan, Roger Kamari. I don't need to copy Anish. I can just be myself, right? Like, mm -hmm. I think that was my issue early on was I was trying to copy so many artists. And I realized I found my style by meshing things that I liked and making it my own niche, no pun intended. You know, so that's kind of what I would say is, I know I gave a lot of like different pieces there advice, but small circle. Uh, you know, stay focused, uh, find people who are real with you, have abundance mentality, and uh, just know your vices and be self-aware. So all of those things, I think, will help you become the artist that you're supposed to be and take feedback. Take a lot of feedback, but at the same time, don't get too high, don't get too low. You know, take it as it comes, but do what you need to do at the end of the day, because only you know. Yeah, wow. Well, I really love that. Yeah, that's, uh, you put that really well. So yeah, and I agree, and I, I think it's uh, yeah when you're with uh, friends, uh, sometimes you know it's uh, it's hard to tell like whether what they think in their mind about you, and uh, I've seen that happen to myself as well. Um, but I think as yeah time comes, you have to uh, forget like what is um, who your like close friends are and uh, who's like you know being fake. But I think at the end of the day, like it's uh, what uh, you have to see, you have to look out for yourself as well. So I, yeah, and I agree with you hundred uh, percent what you're saying. So yeah, so thank thank for that. Uh, no, I appreciate it. Good question. Good question. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Um, and uh, the next question would be, uh, what are your thoughts on the met metaverse? Ooh, my thoughts on the metaverse. Um, I mean, I think the metaverse is a game changer for sure. Um, I think the high the, the long and the short of it is we are getting into immersive technology that is allowing us to connect like never before right so i think the metaverse provides a lot of infrastructure to do things like see a 3d concert you know like i think it's just making things so easy 
that now you could do it at the touch of a button. I think that's cool. Here's my question though, right? When is enough going to be enough? Like how far do we have to go with technology where like it's now it's replacing like, oh, are you going to go to the live concert or are you just going to stream it through the metaverse? Like through something that, you know what I'm saying? Like that's kind of my thoughts. Honestly, I think technology is beautiful. I think we need it to connect as people. I think Facebook, the iPhone, Snapchat, all of these pieces of technology, WhatsApp, they've all brought opportunities for us to connect as people. The whole irony that we often debate about, you know, you've seen it in the social network and the uh, whatever that Netflix thing is. Remember where you're like around so many like-minded people, that's all you think there is. You want to be around diversity and thought. And also like, sometimes you're on your phone the whole day. You're not even connecting with people in real life. You're doing it all on the phone. That's where it's like, damn, like, are we living on a phone now? Or are we actually living in real life? So like, I like the metaverse. I think there's a lot of opportunity to explore things like the NFTs and the, the live streams and 3D concerts and 8D audio, whatever, right? There's so much technology out there, but I think we got to be careful to say like, how far is too far? You know, like, are we actually, are we connecting as people? Are we actually creating a human experience that's unique? Or are we actually taking it too far? Now you're losing the whole connection piece because you're just doing it through technology. Um, I think it's a balance. I think we just have to strike that balance. Do I know what the answer is? Absolutely not. And I'm not even going to try to say I do because I have no idea. But at the end of the day, I think it's tough because it's like you, you don't want to put limitations on you know, how often and how much you can use that technology. Cause I feel like when you put barriers, it causes friction. And when it causes friction, people, you know, it's, yeah, it's, it's complicated, right? We can talk about the whole mask mandate thing. I have my opinions on that. Other people have their opinions on that, you know, and at the end of the day, we just want a safer planet where people aren't, you know, getting sick. And there's a lot of ways to do that, right? Same with the metaverse. We're just trying to connect people. We're trying to use technology that'll put people together that'll create new human experiences there's a lot of ways to do that um it's a complicated technology it's a complicated uh answer in terms of what it is what it isn't i guess we'll see but at the end of the day i think we should just remember like technology technology should be used as a tool to connect us it shouldn't be used as a as a means to kind of hold us back from connecting um in person if possible so uh, that's just what i would say about that i'm sure everyone has their thoughts on it um I'm not saying it's a politically correct answer just to be right in the middle of it. I honestly don't know what it could be. So I, I don't probably, I probably am not the best person to ask about the metaverse. Um, so I don't, I don't, I don't know a lot about it. I'm, I'm still learning about it myself and getting into NFTs, but that's just what I, that's my general thoughts based on what I see. I'm just kind of like, I'm more old school and by the book. Like I like writing songs on paper. I like talking to people in person and approaching people and doing that, all that sort of stuff. So when I see the metaverse, awesome, great great ways to connect but i'm kind of more old school so that's kind of what i prefer to be honest yeah yeah i agree with you yeah that, that, that makes sense yeah and uh yeah i think yeah. also another thing that's becoming big these days uh today on um there's a show a tech check on cnbc they uh they talk about um they were talking about tiktok it's uh that's another like, bigger platform that's now becoming bigger these days with like the uh, all the videos and yeah, it's uh you can take i mean 30 second one minute videos it gives you a, a different experience of like what people are doing nowadays so i think uh those kind of apps are gonna t definitely play a huge role in the near future so uh yeah and i think uh it's it, it's like there's a mix of things happening but yeah i think at the end of the day we have to see like where this is headed towards like the metaverse and see how many people are like gonna go in that more virtual side but uh, i think like i agree with you like you're saying like in terms of the old school methods yeah i love also meeting people in person like how we met, it was like, um, yeah, at an event. So it just, it happened uh, at, uh, it just was out of, I mean, it was not really out of the blue, but I knew the, uh, like one of the singers. So you can, you never know where you might meet someone. So it's, it's pretty cool how it all works here. Well, I, and I'll just even add something that, yeah. so this is contradictory to what I just said. So <laughs> I apologize, but I didn't even, I don't even mean it like this in a bad way. Yeah. I did say technology should be used to connect people, right? Mm -hmm. I met I, I uh, Kabir Beezy, right? Uh, yeah. Brown boy Beezy, who you know, who is, is part of yeah. my tour, and mm -hmm. Gilo and Profit. All of the, all four of us, we met. We met through Instagram. Oh, right. I met yeah. I met Beezy through an Instagram DM, which I told you. 
Um, <laughs> like I, I saw him on an Instagram story and I messaged him and same with profit. I met him through my engineer and on Instagram and Gilo, I met through Brown boy BZ. Mm -hmm. So Instagram and technology and all that is great. It's a way to connect people. We wouldn't be touring if it wasn't for Instagram. Don't get me wrong, but mm -hmm. I personally prefer the in-person meeting that we had. That was awesome. Not yeah. to say you can't connect on Instagram. If you know how to use that stuff and know how to like, there's mm -hmm. always ways, but I just prefer the old school kind of like, you know, meeting in person. There's no right or wrong way here though. Yeah, that's an interesting thing that uh, I could relate to is I actually also met Kabir through Instagram as well. Uh, yeah, actually, that's that's how that's how it started because I actually want to have a, a mutual with a uh, friend with him. Like she said, he's my family friend, and he knows uh, Kabir very well. So, and that's also how we got connected as well. So, yeah, it's pretty cool how it all works at the end. Like you never know where you meet someone anywhere. And uh, actually, uh, and one cool example would be I actually had met um, Six Lack, uh, the the rapper of Black. So uh, he was uh, wow. yes, yeah, sitting next to me on a plane from uh, Amsterdam to uh, here, Dulles. So we, we were chatting. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you so, just never know who you meet, man. Hey, I'll, I'll, I'll never know who's sitting next to you on that flight. Yeah, that's true. So it's, it's pretty cool. How, that's how cool, all, man. Uh, at the end of the day, yeah. But no, I really love what you said. And um, yeah, actually, uh, another follow-up question to uh, the metaverse is, I know, I know we were talking about uh, the NFTs and I know you're slowly getting into them, but do you plan on yeah. launching your NFT soon or like, I guess, getting into more of that space? Yeah. Yeah. There's a few things that I want to, that I want to learn. Um, so I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll preface that to say I'm watching this show on Netflix called Cobra Kai. Oh, Cobra Kai. Yeah. yeah. So I want to learn karate and then I also okay. want to learn hip hop dancing. Um, because I think that'll be effective and helpful for music videos. And I just love yeah. dancing too. And I, and then third on that list is NFTs. So yeah. I don't, I don't know what order I'll be doing it in, but I'll definitely be launching an NFT at some point in the next, actually, I'm not, let me not, not even put a timeline. I don't know. I don't know when I'll, that'll happen, but it will happen. Um, mm -hmm. I think after the tour, the NFT is the goal, um, for sure. So, uh, yeah, man, I, 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 I think the NFT is an opportunity to connect with your fans. I think it's an opportunity to be genuine about like what you want to share. Like what is, if you buy my NFT, what do you get? You know, do you get an unreleased song? Do you get a handwritten like note from me? Do you get like, you know, a backstage pass to one of my concerts? You know, do you get a, a one minute video where I get to talk about you and something I appreciate about you? I mean, I think there's a lot of ways to connect these days. And I think the NFT is a cool way to help your, the people that believe in you, you know, if the value of your NFT goes up, you know, they like investing in stock basically, right? So they also get, they get richer, you, you know, you, and your value goes up as well. So, I mean, I think, I think it's all, you know, it's all good to, you get the, you know, you get the, the buy-in, you know, let's say you get a hundred thousand people to buy your NFT for a, a dollar, right? You make a hundred grand as an artist, which is awesome. Yeah. And then the NFT value goes up $5 and, you know, each, each person just made, you know, four, $4. And obviously that's just like a, a mm -hmm. theoretical example. Right. But, yeah. you know, I think it's cool because, you know, people get to, to grow with you. You're, you're like the company, right. It's like buying stock and, mm -hmm. you know, they, they make money and then you make that short-term money too. And you give them value. So, I mean, I think, you know, mutual benefits cool i like how you get exclusive content or exclusive privileges if you buy that nft so i'm just trying to think about what the right thing is that i want to offer my fans what are those things that i want to offer them what are those benefits uh how do i want to structure that and those sorts of things um yeah 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 i i, I i'm all my thing is i'm, I'm about being personal and like less is more type thing as in like i don't know if i want to offer 500,000 nfts right i would rather do a thousand of them and like have fewer ones where i can give more of an experience to those thousand people um i'm just trying to think about what the right way to build the nft is for me but it's definitely something i want to do and i think that it again this whole goes the whole point goes back to what i said earlier um mm -hmm. you have to adapt if you're going to be if you're going to be, uh, you know, a force, if you're going to be there for a long time, the longevity piece is the answer. 
you adapt with people, you adapt with the time. The, the NFT is, is the thing now, you know, maybe 20 years ago, it was the CD and the iPod. Um, maybe 10 years ago, it was streaming. Um, maybe five years ago, it was like concerts. Now it seems like it's digital concerts. Seems like it's NFTs. Um, it seems like it's independent labels, independent artists. You know, I think the music game has changed um, and the world has changed. So I think just with the NFT and the cryptocurrency question is like, yeah, I mean, I think if there's an opportunity to adapt, you should adapt and you should learn and you should still do what you want to do at the core. Like for me is like, I'm old school. I want to do old school things like meet people in person, write songs, write like, you know, like do all the stuff that I learned growing up. But I also understand there's the, there's the new piece, like, just because there's an opportunity to learn and to develop a skill or to a bit new business idea that's foreign, wearable technology, kind of like Nipsey Hussle has with the, uh, you know, with the, the, his marathon clothing. I mean, I think there's just so many opportunities there. So I think just learning and just adapting and always being a sponge, I think that's important. And, you know, I think there's the never the learning never stops. And just, again, being around people that, give you that opportunity to learn and to do new things um so yeah like again i think the nft is a great example of what the music industry is what it could be and what else will happen in the future if you if you 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 take that leap of faith and you try something that's completely foreign to you i think that's where you learn the most um so i guess being scared is a good thing is what i'm trying to say yeah no uh, i definitely agree with you and uh yeah actually it would be pretty cool like Maybe for your like music, uh, as I was listening to you, uh, you could have, um, uh, for example, a barcode on like say your merchandise, say like your cap or your shirt, like a shirt you give out at like these concerts and you could scan and it goes directly to your Apple Music or Spotify link and people could, uh, you can get more traction through there. So that like by selling an, an NFT or so, like, like you're saying, maybe making a thousand NFTs and you put like um, a barcode and you scan it and takes, it takes it to your open C page and people can buy your uh, NFTs from there. So totally, so that, that, that'd be a pre pretty cool concept. And uh, actually also another fun thing uh, that happened early, actually uh, my, one of my friend's uh, birthday was last year and uh, his cake, actually uh, he had an NFT on his cake, which was pre uh, pretty, pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, man. Yeah. They, they printed it. Uh, like, I guess it was like more, I guess a uh, three, 3D printing in a way, but I mean, I guess I know uh, cake shops now do like a lot of like they put out like the designs on the cake, but it'd be pretty cool in the future to see like 3D printing on like you know different um, clothing, or it could be like say for your uh, like a song of yours, like say if you're playing um, like you have an instrument in the song, you get 3D print like some of those products or something along those lines. So uh, I'm just like thinking out loud, but. It's uh, it's all up in there at this point, but maybe someone might come up with something like that, uh, some technology like that, yeah. Man, there's like so many, like the really, dude. There's like so many ideas, and just like you just never know. Like you know how you're like, this seems so obvious. Someone would have thought of it, and then you see it, and you're like, oh wow, someone is actually you. Like you, you think it's obvious, and no one's done it, and then when someone does it, you're like, oh yeah, why didn't I think of this? Like totally. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and um, yeah, I'm actually working on a similar like a concept and uh, an app. Uh, so it's going to be a connecting booking and music stream app. So for like, for example, like a user can book you for virtual events or physical events, and they can book you for like Zoom parties, Instagram live videos, Facebook live videos, or like you know any wow. other type of uh, social audio apps. So that's uh, that's the goal, and uh, it's going to be called Museum. Actually, I have started. Uh, building like the rough idea and uh, it's, uh, it's it's a virtual museum and you're gonna you can wear like vr goggles and people can view real-time events happening right in front of the eyes sitting at home yeah so uh well you gotta you gotta you gotta uh you gotta beta use it right here so you know you gotta <laughs> you gotta use it here man I, I'll, I'll definitely check that i'll try that i'll shoot that to me um i um i did a twitch stream event during covid actually with uh, a company and that was a really interesting event because like we had to hold we had to learn the whole twitch thing and we had to learn just how to set that up for like a corporate event but yeah and then that that's exactly the point here is like 
because of COVID, everything became virtual. And so it forced us to kind of like think of a workaround for doing a, uh, an event where, you know, you're not going to an actual concert. How do you do this? So you're like, twit. We set it up, we figured it out. And um, to your point, to your idea, like, I'm excited for that. I think that's cool, man. I think that, I think the world is becoming increasing, increasingly digitized. So, I mean, the in-person stuff's always going to be there, but like the digital stuff, who knows? You can do a concert for like, you know, a company in the middle of Morocco and you're like in California, right? Like so many opportunities there. It's cool. Yeah, that's true. And uh, yeah, a lot of stuff has been happening also on these different social audio apps. Like you're probably from like Clubhouse and there's Wisdom and uh, now there's a new one called like Connect.Club and uh, a few other ones out there. Uh, there's one called Voices. So mm -hmm. uh, for example, like Voices is um, an app where like say um, you have a group of about like 30, 40 guests um, coming to listen to your lecture or like um, your uh, guest speaking event, uh, you can charge them say by like 50, 40, 50 dollars per ticket and you can mm -hmm. monetize all that. So uh, now apps are offering those types of services where the users can like monetize and, uh, and an artist like you, I think you can benefit from that and put your like music out there or like talk about uh, your uh, music career and uh, your tech career. So yeah. Totally, man. There's so much out there. Um, I'm excited to see where it goes and where, where things end up. But yeah, just so many like independent, like I, I feel like you don't even, like like you said, you don't need a label anymore. You do it all on your own, basically. Right. I mean, it's also important to have like a label, like, like yeah, you know how you have a management team. Uh, so I think it's important. Yeah, yeah. Structure is important for sure. Yeah. That's true. Um, but yeah, actually going into um, the last two questions. Um, so the uh, second to last one would be, um, what does uh, success mean to you? Yeah, man, like, I guess, obviously, I would want to be one of the greatest artists in the world. I want to tour. I want to be on the Mount Rushmore of hip hop, right? That's, that's like, you know, what is that? What is that's the easy way to say that's what success means. But honestly, for me, success is very simple: is being able to inspire people, is being able to do what I love every day as a career. So being able to do music full time, being able to 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 make every hour that I'm working not feel like work, like feel like something that I want to do. Right? Like that's that's something I want to inspire people. I want to be able to use my music as a launch pad for other things, nonprofits, um, fundraisers, foundations, uh, like uh, speaking events, going and, and doing public speaking to, to teach kids about just things I've learned in my life. There's a lot of things that I want to do. And I see music as like a, a baseline for that to uh, provide with me with more opportunities to share my experiences, to help people. Um, I think the biggest thing with success is it's not a real thing. It's something that we define each of each of us defines for ourselves. So I think you have to, you have to look within and say, what does success mean to me? What, what do I want it to mean to me? If whatever I say doesn't matter to anyone else, that's, that's not going to be their success metrics. You know, whatever they want to do, they should do. They should be happy. You know what that, and that's kind of my, my kind of my, my thing there. And what I'll say to that even is like, you, you know, like, I think sitting down with yourself and figuring out who you are and what's important to you and, you know, what you want to do with your life and, um, you know, how you want to spend your time. I think where you spend your time is, you know, where you spend your energy, where you spend your energy is who you are, you know? So I think just being deliberate about your time, being deliberate about like who the people are in your life. Um, I think success is, is defined by the person. I don't think success is even a real thing. Like getting a, a seven figure salary, getting a job, having kids, like these are all like societal, societal things. They're not real. You know, success to you could mean building an app with 5 million users that people are using every day to success for me could be like being able to tour and be in a different country every, every week. Um, success to someone else could be like starting a family and being, you know, having kids. Like, I think, I think you should figure out what success is and do that. And I think, I think the biggest thing is mentality. That's why with my music, that's what's important to me is my mentality and being able to share, just having good, having good values, elevating each other, being abundant. These are things I preach in my music, you know, being, being a good person, being authentic, the ups and downs of emotions. 
you know, I think music is a powerful tool because it inspires people and it galvanizes people and it does it more so in a better way and an easier way. People listen to music more and get more from it than they do from listening to their mom or dad or their, you know, somebody they know. So I think that's an opportunity to like preach and to, and to share things and to be on brand. And like, for me, that's like what I always aim to do is like do the right thing, be the right person, share the right things in my music. You know, like I always say this, like when people go down here, when they go low, you got to <laughs> Michelle Obama, like you got to just got to make sure you, you stay up here. You, you, that's for me is like, that's the hardest thing is like taking the high road. Like I, LeBron James is one of my biggest role models in the world. And he's the greatest athlete ever, in my opinion, but like he always takes the high road or he tries to. And that's kind of what I, I study that. Cause I'm like, I can on, on and off the court, take the high road. You know, that success to me is not losing sight of who you are and sticking to your values, sticking to your principles and not being afraid to call people out if, if, if you think they're wrong and also managing that too. Like some people are not worth your energy, you know? So it's just being, it's just evaluating these reading situations just trying to do the best you can. And just trying to understand that like, you know, not every relationship in your life is meant to be there forever. And that's okay too, you know, and life happens and we do the best that we can in the moment and we learn from it. And the goal is to always learn and to grow and to get better. Um, so I think success is, is defined to each person, but for me, at least it's being able to live my passion, you know, live, do what I love to do and inspire people every day and remind people that like, you get to choose your situation every day. You get to choose who you are and where you are. And if you don't like the situation in you are in, then remove, remove yourself from it and do something else, you know, be the change you wish to see. Don't be passive and don't complain, do the work, make the change, be the person you want to be, live the life the way you want on your terms. Um, don't make excuses, uh, make actions and, 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 and make plans and execute in them and follow on them. When, yeah, nice. Yeah, I really love that uh, answer. And uh, actually a follow-up question to that would be, um, what does your daily routine look like and how do you stay focused day to day? Man, I'm even, I'm not even gonna lie. I don't really have a good daily routine. I mean, I, I do. I don't have like a, I'm not like a wake up at 6 a.m. and, you know, go to the gym and, you know, make myself breakfast and all that sort of stuff. I don't have that really, that real, that routine like that, but, you know, I get up probably around eight or nine. I'll, uh, I'll start my day by, I don't know, I'll take a shower, I'll sit down, I'll chill a little bit, I'll go walk, I'll take a walk outside. I like acai bowls. I get acai bowl. Um, yeah, yeah, with almond butter and extra Nutella. Um, yeah, man, that's my thing. And then I take a walk. You know, I'll start my day. I'll, I'll get some some good work in, whether it's like my job stuff, my music stuff. I'll check my emails. Um, I would say in, towards the afternoon in my day is where I really like ramp up on stuff. So, you know, whether it's making calls about shows, whether it's emailing people, whether it's working on a song, I kind of get more, I get more into that during the evening. I'm more of a night person. I, I thrive at night. Um, I don't go to bed super late. I go to bed probably at 10, 10, 11 o'clock. Uh, mm -hmm. But like during the evenings is when I kind of start to write down my goals for the next day, start to think about what I need to do. Um, I'm a big like, I make a lot of to-do lists. I prioritize a lot of things, two or three things every day I try to knock out. I'm DMing people all the time, connecting with them, building new fans, working on my music. It's kind of a nonstop. So I'm on my phone a lot. So I think that's something I'm trying to reduce just because the nature of being in like the art, like the entertainment industry, you're always meeting new people, connecting, building relationships, uh, you know, that sort of thing. And I think especially with the tour right now, it's been just a lot. Like I'm DMing hundreds of people every day. I'm sending emails. I'm figuring out my tour set. Um, I have my job too. I'm I'm trying to also make sure I take my walks, have my acai bowls. Um, mm. Some days can get overwhelming. And for day, days like those, I just lay in my bed and just chill the whole day. And Sometimes I don't want to be around people and sometimes I need my space because I, I would say most people don't know this about me. I'm fairly introverted. I'm actually probably more, more introverted than I am extroverted. Probably wouldn't know that about me. Um, and I artistically, just how I am as a creative, I just need my space. I even just need my space as a person, not even just as a creative, but I like to be alone. Um, 
I spend time with my sister. We live together. Um, you know, we go for walks. Sometimes we have dinner together and those sorts of things, um, which is great. But naturally, I just like being alone. I like spending time alone and kind of just having my having my time for myself. But um, yeah, my, my routine honestly varies. It varies based on what's going on that week. Um, if there's a show I have to do, then I'll travel. Um, if it's, you know, auditioning or practicing or getting ready for something, then I'll do that. If it's something like this, you know, I'll be, I'll be ready for that. Um, it's kind of whatever the, the week has in store for me. Um, I think I'm ready for the challenge and, you know, I've been traveling a lot for the, for the tour. So that's been really cool seeing new cities and seeing new people, meeting new fans. Um, my family lives in Denver, so I, I go back pretty often, at least like once a month to see them. Um, yeah, so I mean, I, I think the routine just varies. I think the commonality is the SIE bowl and the walk. I do that every day. Um, but other than that, I like flexibility. I don't like to have too much structure in my day. I like spontaneity. I like to do things on the whim sometimes just because I think that's how you live. That's how you have experiences. And that's honestly how I make good music. Um, I took a break for a year in 2021 because I wasn't inspired. A lot of people don't know this, but I just had a stash of like unreleased music, like 10, 12, 14 songs that I still haven't put out that I've been working on the last few years. But 2021, I just took a, a huge, a huge break because I didn't have anything I wanted to share and I just wasn't inspired. So then I lived a little, had some experiences, you know, came back end of the year made some new music, pretty happy with it and kind of on this trend now and I'm back on it and I'm ready to make more. But, you know, sometimes you need to take breaks. Sometimes the best thing to do, man, is just step away and just like not be in front of something all the time. Because I think my best ideas come when I'm not around the things that I'm doing. Like when I'm kind of just hanging out and chilling and whether it's take, taking a shower, whether it's going for a walk, whether it's just sitting with my thoughts in my bed, not even doing the music itself. I think that's when my best thoughts come. And I'm like, okay, I should, I should try this tomorrow. So I think just something for people is like the abundance mentality. When you take the pressure off, when you actually chill and you kind of let the universe do its thing and you just kind of live and you let things happen, you take that pressure off. It's good for you because then you get to live, you get to relax. You don't control the universe. You don't say, I need to have this outcome happen. And when that happens, things flow. And that's where I get my best ideas is when I don't put pressure on it, when I kind of just see how it goes. Um, all that to say, a routine's good. I personally just don't think too much structure is good for me. I like my, I like fluidity during the day. I like unpredictability. I like my spontaneity. I like my routine, but I like my spontaneity too. I think you need a balance, at least for me as a creative. That's what helps me. Yeah. Yeah, I love that, especially the acai bowls. Well, yeah, I love those. Acai bowls, man. Acai bowls and an afternoon, morning, afternoon walks. That's the that's the jam, man. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, no, that's good stuff. And um, yeah, actually, uh, to, before um, I play your one of your songs to close us out, I'd love to you know, hear any closing thoughts you have or uh, any other thoughts you may have about the interview. Yeah, yeah man. Um, uh, I do hope you guys check out my music. It's not even on some like, I need you to be fans sort of thing. It's just more like, I, I think there's something that I have to say that you'll relate to. I think like, whether it's relationship issues, whether it's pressures of family and society, whether it's like being the son or daughter or kid of an immigrant and just being able to pay it back to what my parents have done for me and what your parents have done for you, you know, whether it's, um, you know, whatever it may be, whatever you're going through, um, that's my brand. That's what I like to do. I like to make music something for somebody. So check that out. You know, I hope you do relate to it. I hope my music motivates you. Um, I hope there is a lesson in it. And at the end of the day, I, at least I hope you have fun listening to it because I, you know, I, I enjoy, you know, I put a lot of time into this. I put a lot of thought and energy into it. Um, I have some new music videos on YouTube. But, you know, I hope those galvanize you, energize you. Um, my music and my message and my brand, at least at the end of the day, it's just to motivate people. Um, if you don't like my music, it's cool. Um, I do hope that something you get out of what I'm trying to say though, is like, go live life on your own terms, go be the person you want to be. Don't let anyone tell you what you are, what you aren't. Um, you know, I say for 20 plus years, I'm, I'm almost, I just turned 28. Right. So I'm just figuring this stuff out, but like 20, 25 plus years, I was kind of living a lie where I was like, I'm not happy. Not that I don't enjoy what I do, not that I don't enjoy 
all the stuff I've learned in my life. Like I said, it's all connected and it's come back in one way or another. But at the end of the day, you, you got to stop listening to other people. You know, you got to just live life on the terms that you want to live them. And if people don't like it and they don't agree, that's okay. You know, they'll figure out what they want to do too. Um, I think I saw something that really resonated with me. It's like, um, like small-minded people talk about people. Uh, medium-minded people talk about things and then like large-minded people talk about ideas so I encourage you when you watch this to like focus on ideas focus on ways to grow focus on yourself don't worry about what the other person next to you is doing don't worry about what they're up to like don't like don't put that energy out like don't try to like spend time bringing other people down because I'll tell you this someone that's doing more than you will never criticize you it's usually someone that's doing less than you that'll tell you like what are you doing because they're afraid they can't do it themselves. So don't listen to people. Show them love when they show you, you know, when they show you negativity, always, always throw love back to them. Always be graceful, always be kind, always do the right thing. And just always remember, like, at the end of the day, it's energy. So good energy you put out, the good energy will come back to you. Um, and that's kind of all I got to say. That's, that's kind of my brand and my, me in a nutshell, Anish. So. Okay. Yeah, I really love that. And uh, yeah, if you can tell uh, the listeners like uh, where they can find you, like on Instagram, the handles and all. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, let's see. Anish Music at A-N-I-C-H-E Music, M-U-S-I-C. That's my Instagram. I think that's my Twitter. That's my TikTok. Um, that's my Facebook as well. Um, you can find me on Spotify and the other streaming platforms at A apostrophe N-I-C-H-E um yeah i'm on all the streaming platforms um you can find me uh, as well on youtube you anish music a apostrophe n-i-c-h-e space m-u-s-i-c um excited for the tour if you're what if you're new if you're in new york april 30th or denver may 8th um you can get tickets on my instagram bio at a-n-i-c-h-e-m-u-s-i-c um excited to see you guys in denver and new york city um i guess new york city then denver um but yeah lots of cool stuff going on i appreciate you guys tuning in again man like uh raul i appreciate the opportunity having me um it's, it's been a privilege it's been a pleasure and um yeah for you guys watching feel free to shoot me a a message on any of those platforms and you know i i, I try to respond to most of my messages it's not all of them so if I delay, I apologize. It's kind of crazy right now, but uh, you know, I definitely, I definitely connect with you guys. I appreciate it. Yeah, you're most welcome, and I'm glad I'm, uh, this was a great interview. And uh, thank, thanks so much for sharing all the uh, wonderful stories and inspiring quotes. And uh, yeah, this, uh, this has been amazing. And yeah, I definitely, all, everyone should check out Anisha's music, and uh, he's doing great things. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to having you on my show again. And I'll play uh, one last. Uh, song. Absolutely. Shout out Ruckus Avenue Radio. Shout out Rahul. Appreciate you guys for having me. And yeah, See a Belief this is my uh, latest song. Got a music video for it too. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, thanks so much. And uh, here I'll play uh, See a Belief right now. Hell yeah. See you. The waves roll by in the heavens again. I know you see it, but my, my heart is screaming. Still, I can't believe it. I, I must be dreaming. Yeah. Remember how we met? How we played it so cool. Your vibe was old school. I tried to be smooth. My eyes were way glued. This time I'll make moves and lie to make through. Where were you all my life? Through all the pain and strife. Remember in November on a rainy day? They say the cars tend to play out in the greatest way. Yeah. We was on opposite ends, hey. So we started as friends and love it blossom and bloom. We the light of the moon. And in spite of the chatter, we persevered, made it through. We knew what mattered. Yeah, so that's a little bit of uh, Sea of Leap for you all, and uh, you can check uh, Anitra out, like you said, on Apple Music, Spotify, all the streaming platforms out there, and uh, yeah, thank you all so much, uh, uh, I mean, thank you Anitra for this interview, and uh, looking forward to having you on soon, and thank you all so much for listening in, and uh, uh, this is the Raul Vajatru featuring Anish uh, Music, who's um, a recording artist, producer, thank you. Appreciate it. We'll talk soon. Thanks, Ralph. Yeah, no problem. Uh, I, yeah.